Hello all, welcome to Artham Academy, Aspiring Leaders in Innovation and Technology. So in the series of blogs, we are giving so much of information about different aspects of CEA or FEA concepts. In this, we bought again a new concept, a special connection that is nothing but constraint equation. In this video, you can get the information about what are the special connections, why it is useful, how the working uh, style of uh, constraint equations in the complete model, how many types of constraint equations are there. Majorly, to conclude in one sentence, we will use constraint equations for the special applications to simplify the complex models without compromising in the functionality and get results in a faster way. Let us start the video. What are constraint equations? Constraint equations are nothing but nodal decrease arises in finite element in the application. That means you can see a coupling of rigid floor to its boundary nodes in a framed structure. That means so we are going to uh, grab the nodes in a framed structure for the application of some load are replicating the simplicity of it. With the examples and the with the types, we are going to explain in this. This video talks about, as mentioned earlier, the types, functionality, equation, along with the practical applications. Tying different elements of uh, different types of elements together, which will reduce the complexity and creates the proper connectivity in the complete model. That means it meets the uh, requirement of overall compatibility. This is where commonly we will apply constraint equations. What are this? This what will have what will what this does? This allows you to relate the motion of different portion of the model through use of an equation. That means to wherever these constraint equations are defined according to the type and functionality, it will give the relative motion of that particular set of nodes. How it is, we will see now. The equations relates to degrees of freedom of one or more remote points for static, transient, harmonic, model analysis systems. That means this constraint equations are applicable to these many types of analysis. Always remember constraint equations are linear combinations. That's why we are simplifying our model to reduce the time and complexity. Coming to the definition of it, what it is. Constraint equation is nothing but a complex relation than a coupled DOF. Degrees of freedom we know, right? For each node, different degrees of freedom is there. If you are coupling those degrees of freedom to one particular uh, master node, then that relation is called CS. Always CS is a linear equation relating to displacements. What are the primary variables of FEM? Those are nothing but displacements. So directly CS are related to displacements at nodes that are created. That means if uh, you can see in the picture from the center, it is connecting to some nodes. All these are connected through some system of linear equations and in which way they are related in terms of displacement based on degrees of freedom. To understand uh, in detail, we are going to, to understand clearly, here are some points you can see. First, each slave node only active master node and their corresponding equation will be stored. That means these are the slave nodes and the center node is called as master node. So one master node is connected to maximum number of slave nodes. There is no limit in slave nodes. To one, you can connect to 10, 100, 1000 nodes also according to the mesh and according to the functionality. Since these slave nodes are constrained by different degrees of freedom, it will get stored in an arrow. How it will work? So for this, it is connected to these slave nodes through some equations. So those equations will get stored 
in an array. So finally, the connectivity between the equations will store in an array and uh, when it calculating the results according to the connectivity, uh, this displacements we will get, the slave nodes displacements we will get directly from that array. So now we talked about the equation. What is that equation? We will see. This is the equation in general form how the things are. That means if you are considering a node, so for that the degrees of freedom is 3, ux, uy, uz into that coefficients according to the weighted average or according to the distance it will create some constant. This is what the equation it will form internally for the calculation of constraint equations. In general, we can write that in the sigma form. Constant is equal to sigma 1 is to n. That is nothing but n is nothing but number of elements into number of degrees of freedom. Okay. Do follow our other blocks to know degrees of freedom for each element type. Okay, so where n is written as number of equa terms in the equation, that is nothing but number of degrees of freedom into number of nodes constrained and ui is nothing but the dof. That is how we are saying the from master node for all the slave nodes, it is connected based on coefficient into degrees of freedom, that is nothing but displacement value. After the solution, the sum of all user defined coefficient time, their deflections equals to this constant. So that is nothing but it depends on the type of connection again. In CE also we have three categories of it. So according to the functionality, we are going to apply different applications of different categories. But the equation remains same. The coefficient varies and weighted function varies. Okay. Let us throw some light on background of CS where it is applicable, how the things will happen. So most of the constraint equation we will call as CE and the command will always start as CE in uh, many simulation tools. Each CE has a unique number as we are saying the master node is connected to all the slave nodes. Each slave node will have will get created with the connection with a unique number okay as per our requirement that unique number we can modify delete and add according to the selection process or the requirement of the component what are types of CS where it is applicable when we are connecting two adjacent regions of different components for linearity, why it will happen most of the times when we are doing some models. So without changing the stiffness, stiffness matters a lot for which will affect directly uh, to our, st to our uh, stress and displacements. So consideration of model always matters. For that when we are connecting two adjacent components we can use this. What is that? CE interference. So both components will get connected based on this CE interference. It will act based on the coefficient and weighted average. The second one is to make a single unit or to consider as a rigid. The best examples given here are for modeling of a vehicle rim, wagon wheel or bolted joint in a complex 360 degree model all comes under this category CE rigid region. The third category of CE is for the application of load that means direct application of torque load is not available in ANSYS APDL rather than applying changing the moments into forces with respect to distance if we apply through the master node it will get calculated automatically based on weighted average and the coefficients. That is what the third type is. That is nothing but CE for load application as the name indicates. We can see we can apply all types of load when we, we have this kind of CEs. Let us go into details. 
describing each type of CE. As the video comes lengthy, we have explained in this video only about CE interface, whereas created an another blog of CE rigid and for CE load application that is nothing but RBE3. Now focus majorly on CE interface. What is interface? Interface is used to tie together two regions with dissimilar mesh. The command for CE interface in ANSYS is CEINTF. So that means it represent the CEs based on two different regions. What are the applications? We can use not only for dissimilar measures, we can also use for dissimilar element types. But before that, let us know the process. At the interface, if we have two different regions, one having very coarse mesh and another having very fine mesh, then how we have to do it? The node should be selected from the denser mesh that is fine mesh region and the element should be selected from the coarse mesh region that is less denser mesh region. Let us see in a pick form. So you can see this is denser and this is coarser mesh. So what will happen here is it will get interpolated based on degrees of freedom. Then it will relate the constraint equations at the interface from A to B. The stresses across this region is not necessarily continuous. Nodes in the interface region should not have specified constraints. Whenever we are applying CE interference, this is majorly to capture the stiffness of the complete structure. At this particular location, it may locally get over constrained. We should not consider exactly that stresses. Okay, But definitely we have to do this for consideration of the stiffness or connecting two dissimilar meshes. You can see some of the practical examples here. Connecting dissimilar mesh. If two meshed objects with different node patterns, we can create CEs to connect them. Automatically calculates all necessary coefficients and constant. This is between 3D to 3D. This is between shell to shell. That is 2D to 2D. We can even connect from 2D to 3D as well. So these are the practical applications where we can see where we need to have definitely of hex mesh but it is not possible. So this is the best way to do. The other one is connecting dissimilar element types. If we need to connect element types of dissimilar here in the picture you can see 1D to 2D we are connecting. This is where it is helpful. So this is the best way to do. Another processor is also there. Some people may use MPC algorithm as well. How it will do? It will connect from beam to solid or shell to solid etc. These are the major connections which we will use for CE interface. Okay. Hope you have a good knowledge on where to apply CEs and why to apply CEs. What need to consider in CEs. See, do see our another blog which uh, which have created based on CE regenerated RB3. Thank you. Have a nice day. Keep learning.